Welcome everybody to the Kalispell Warhawk Dynasty on this college football Saturday. The Warhawks are on the road taking on the Arizona Wildcats as Kalispell enters still ranked number 19 after losing 20 to six against Stanford. It was a game that really exposed some flaws within this Kalispell roster, especially along their offensive line. They have a much better matchup today but are coming into this game without starting quarterback Brandon Warren. Definitely an interesting one here for the Warhawks as we get underway in week six. Arizona up first and they will take a knee in the end zone. They do have a talented quarterback here in Arizona. It's senior Brian Henderson, but this offense has been very bad through four games. They have not scored more than 19 points in a single game yet. And they'll hand it to Jonas Givens on first down. He picks up five before meeting Wesley Merrill. Third down here for the Wildcats. Toss left. Givens has the edge wide open. First down and much more. Into Warhawk territory. And he coughs up the football. Chris Baker scoops it up and the Warhawks take over. The tough year for Arizona continues. They got the big play they were hoping for to start this game. And now the Warhawks take over with Justin Colbert, the starting quarterback. Brandon Warren suffered some broken ribs last week, so he is out. Toss left here for Kyle Thomas outside, and not much room there, maybe three yards. Justin Colbert, a pure pocket passer, so that does change up the game plan for Kalispell this week. Here is Colbert facing the pressure, and he is sacked. This was what got Kalispell a week ago. In the Pac-12, everyone's got good talent up front. So does Kalispell have the pass protection to deal with it? Last week, they gave up 10 sacks and lost their quarterback. Colbert, third down, 13. Pressure's picked up. Here's a deep shot downfield. Lead in for Carl Joyce. He makes the adjustment for a 42-yard reception. Luckily, the safety there could not locate the football. Here's Colbert off the play action. Gets this away to the outside with a strong throw again for Joyce. That's where Colbert shines. His accuracy is impressive. Now they go up the middle. Big hole for Troy Lee and a touchdown. Outstanding start for Kalispell. And how about left guard Rodney Hall? Here is a junior college transfer. Takes out the linebacker in the second level. That's a great looking play for Kalispell. We have an update now from the Big 12. Oklahoma tops Texas by 18. Texas now two and two after having an amazing recruiting class this past off season. Seven nothing Hawks. And the uh, Arizona Wildcats have a tough start to this drive. Boogie Turner registers his fifth sack of the season. Third and seven for Henderson, takes the underneath route to Byers and that will move the chains for Arizona. Henderson, a pretty accurate quarterback, five touchdowns, two picks on the year. He'll hand it to Givens this time and he gets some daylight bursting through the line for a first down carry. At their own 41 yard line, here's Henderson on first down. Again to scramble, hit by Boogie and tackled by Alex Hardy. It's another sack. Two sacks on this possession, second and 11. Quick drop back for Henderson. Byers hangs on, good hit delivered. Third and short. Trying to get across the 50. Henderson takes off and is wrecked up on the play. This time it's Bobby Hill. Fourth down. Set to punt this away to Marty Belafonte and he's gonna field this one inside the 10. Belafonte to the middle, breaks outside with that great speed. Across the 20, nice return for Marty. What a fun player he's become on this roster. Here's Justin Colbert beginning his second possession with an accurate throw to Justin Payne. Last year, Colbert got some playing time and had 11 touchdown passes, six interceptions. Check down here, caught Kyle Thomas, first down and more. Makes a move to the outside, KT for a gain of 19. Troy Lee checks in as the tailback. He sweeps to the right side and a good hit stops him in his tracks. Gain of three. Lee getting more playing time this week already as Colbert finds Payne once again. First down, Kalispell inside the Arizona 30. Good accuracy on display for Colbert early on. Setting up a screen, Lee on the catch, gets a block. 
Inside the 20, Troy Lee out of bounds with a gain of 18. Kalispell spread this time and motioning all the way across is Marty Belafonte. Quick screen, Belafonte breaks outside to the five, to the goal line, he's in, touchdown! An 11-yard touchdown catch for Marty Belafonte. Three running backs on that drive had a catch of longer than 10 yards. This backfield is really special. 14-0 Kalispell, and they continue to apply the pressure Boogie Turner gets his second. It's now a three-way tie for most sacks on this team with him, Triplett, and Harrison. Third and 14, not much there off the hand of Lowe. And another three and out for the Wildcats. So far, a great bounce back week for the Warhawks as they will head to the ground game and Thomas is trapped in the backfield. Good play made by James Nelson. Second down and 14 for Colbert. There's a quick throw on target again, called in by Carl Joyce. Joyce the motion man on third and four. Colbert patient, unloads and finds Joyce again inside the 40, gain of 12. That's now four catches for Joyce. I said last episode I thought Colbert was a, a nice boost for both Joyce and Hayden John Charles, two players that haven't had the most production this year. Toss outside on third down. What a spin from Kyle Thomas. It looked like there was no chance at him converting. Now the drive continues. Colbert setting up the screen, not open. So we'll find his backup plan. Thomas spins his way for six, but a flag is down. An outstanding play by Thomas is wiped out by an OPI on Justin Payne. Kalispell backs up 10 yards, now in long distance field goal range. Colbert up top again. What a catch! Thomas Roberts with the rebound. He had to adjust for the underthrown football and does so with an amazing grab. Kalispell primed to score again. First and goal. Colbert pressured and sacked back near the 10 yard line. They wanted a quick slant. Thurman McPherson makes the play. Second down and goal, Colbert again throwing underneath, caught Mike Harris to the one and stopped just outside the end zone. Kalispell calls in the fullback, Bo Lee, and they hand it to McKinley for the touchdown. Every running back finding a way to make a big play today. It's 21-0 Kalispell, and the route is on. Arizona's tough season continues. They trail by three touchdowns. They've lost each of their four games this season by at least 11 points. Handoff this time. Givens is engulfed by Chris Harrison, proving he can make plays in the running game as well. On second down, Henderson gets it away quickly, and Parker makes the catch. Shannon Parker, their leading receiver this season with four touchdowns. On third and six, a slant this time, it's Rusty Walters. And a gain of 12, Arizona now beyond the 50. Just trying to get on the scoreboard. Hands off Jonas Gibbons up the middle again. Gets some room and picks up seven more. Some good running out of Gibbons thus far despite the fumble. On third down, they'll pass it out in the flats. Low shove back, can't regain his ground. He loses four and Kalispell calls a timeout. We're looking at about a 55 or 56 yard field goal attempt right here. And the kick is pulled wide left, but it had the distance. Kalispell now with time to score again, as Justin Colbert starts this possession, staying patient and throwing his first incompletion of the first half. Colbert nearly 200 yards passing already. On second down, he feels the rush, takes off up the middle. Colbert with a pretty good run as he picks up the first down. A minute four to go, Colbert second down. Quick strike outside, caught Mike Harris, and another first down. Kalispell has adapted really well to the change at quarterback. Here's second down, Colbert again feeling the rush. Won't pass the line of scrimmage as he throws off line for Hayden John Charles. Down to 35 seconds, a third and nine. Arizona brings the house. Colbert to the flats, caught John Charles, turns up, yanked down by the face mask. The referee saw it and the flag is thrown. Automatic first down. 
29 seconds to go. Kalispell has two timeouts. Sweeping outside, Troy Lee taken down after a five-yard pickup. 18 seconds to go here on second down. Colbert pressured. Down he goes. Again, the Wildcats are getting some pressure here when Colbert wants to let the play develop. Now they're backed up to about the 10-yard line on third and goal. Colbert to the sideline. Hold in by John Charles. Touchdown, Warhawks. We've been waiting for Hayden's first score this season. It took six games for the Mackey Award winner, but he's in the end zone, and Kalispell has opened up a huge first half lead. What a fun half of football. Justin Colbert has been phenomenal today as the junior has thrown two touchdowns, only two incompletions, and the offense is back on track this week. Kalispell up 28 to nothing here in Arizona, and they will start the second half with the football. Here's a pass outside the numbers, and Thomas Roberts makes another good catch. Two catches on the day for Roberts. Colbert now first and 10. Only a two-man rush as Colbert sends a rainbow downfield for John Charles. 58-yard touchdown. He's got to make up for lost time. It hasn't been a fast start for Hayden this year, but with Justin Colbert, he's got his first two touchdowns under his belt. The Kalispell dominance continues 35 to nothing. It's been a roller coaster ride of a season so far as Bobby Hill registers another sack. But Kalispell has had two dominant wins now in conference play. They had the stinker against Stanford and a bad game against West Virginia. So we're still trying to figure out who this team really is, but they're off to a pretty good start, I'd say, here in Pac-12 play. Here's Colbert under center on third down. Handoff going to Troy Lee, straight ahead for a gain of four. Lee has been the most efficient running back on the roster this season. Play action here for Colbert. Airs it outside, Mike Harris makes the catch. Wow, the accuracy outside the numbers is something special. Colbert doesn't play like a backup quarterback as he gets sacked by the blitzing linebacker. Loss of six, that's Bernard Griffin. Third and 14, what's Colbert got this time? Across the middle, caught Joy spinning his way down, a yard shy of the marker. Three more on the board for Kalispell, 38-0. Kalispell has never pitched a full shutout in team history, so they're trying to today. This is the 98th game in team history, by the way. 327 to go here in the third quarter as Lowe makes the reception. Arizona into Kalispell territory for I believe only the second time today. Actually third, that first possession was a fumble. Henderson on first down, he gets wrapped up and there's Harrison assuming his lead at the top of the sack chart now for the Warhawk defense. Third and 13, here's a deep ball. Henderson one on one, caught by Rusty Walters. Michael Hunter couldn't get his head turned around to locate the football. Arizona, goal to go. Here's the handoff. Jonas Givens, left side, touchdown Arizona. No shutout today for the Warhawk defense. Still, it's been a great week for Kalispell football as the starters are still in the game for now, up 31 points. Justin Colbert again under pressure. That hasn't been remedied today. The pass rush has still been an issue up front, and it could be all season long. Third and 13. Colbert again showing off the arm, throwing into double coverage and nearly getting intercepted by Brandon Lindsay. For the Warhawks, they have now brought in second team defensive players as the Wildcats trail by 31. Here is a short reception made by Hadley. Kalispell has some good depth along their defense, especially at linebacker. Leo Thorne is in the game along with Xavier Bozeman. Here the play is made by Titus Graves. Arizona to attempt another long field goal, and now it's wide right. The distance is there, but not the accuracy. The Warhawks' second team offense is now in the game with quarterback Roshan Phillips. A fun note about this game, Phillips also backed up Justin Colbert in high school. They both came out of Polson. So Phillips into the game here, assuming his backup role as Marcus Payne can't get much. 8 of 10 on third down. Colbert was fantastic. 
Now Phillips needing 13 yards. Airs it out. Knocked away by Lindsey. They tried to hit that deep comeback once again. Kalispell's defense back to the field. Juno Springs is out there at the safety position as the pass sails outside. Caught Kevin Lowe first down. Speaking of Juno Springs, we'll be seeing his brother next week, Reno Springs and the Washington State Cougars. Here's a big hit from Xavier Bozeman, a really fun player on this team. Gibbons, though, gets some room on second down, breaking into the secondary, gain of 13. Third down and short. Tommy Jordan, the high safety. And now it's Pitt straight ahead. No surprise, Kalispell now having some issues with the run defense. Gibbons again, running room into the secondary. Chase down near the 11. Arizona trying to score a little bit more. Second down, Henderson on the keeper. Left side, breaks one tackle and stuffed around the 10. Third down and seven yards to go. Four on the rush, Henderson short through the hands of his tight end low, incomplete. And fourth down, Arizona set to go for it. Henderson to the air, takes off to scramble to the five, stopped by Graves, shy of the marker, turnover on downs. Warhawks take over here, backed up in their own end zone. Phillips hands it and Marcus Payne gets the call. I had really high hopes for Payne coming out of his recruiting class, but it's been Marty Belafonte who has really shined as a backup running back. He isn't playing much because of his role on special teams. I've been waiting to see Payne take that next step here as a running back. On third down, good throw here from Phillips, finding Justin Payne for a gain of 10. Hand off this time, Belafonte gets past the outside defender, gets 10 yards. His burst and athleticism makes him such a fun player to watch. Belafonte now diving up the middle and picking up six more. Phillips with Belafonte deep in the backfield, hands it off on a jet sweep now. Tommy Jordan, he'll play some defense, he'll play some offense. Another player that I'm looking forward to see how his career unfolds. Phillips now off play action, and no chance here. Another sack for the Arizona front. Oh, some Wildcat now. Kalispell getting creative with the backups as Belafonte gets wrapped up for a loss. Kalispell 38, Arizona 7. Not much time to go here in week 6. Henderson third and 4, dumps it off, and Lowe is out of bounds, shy of the marker. Kalispell now will get one more possession, and they'll bring Dustin Payment into the game. He can run some option. He'll do so right here. On the keeper, Payment picks up the first down. Payment also a baseball player in the springtime. He is a left-handed pitcher. Good carry here for Marcus Payne. That's what we want to see. I judge running backs on their ability to create yards that weren't there prior. Payment throws complete. Good spin by Belafonte. And he almost broke away for another big play. Maybe time for one more here. Dustin Payment underneath to Antoine Knightley. Zeros on the clock. This game is over. Great win for the Kalispell Warhawks. 38 to 7 is your final as Kalispell improves to 4 and 2 at the halfway point. So this season has been a bit tougher than last. But I'm excited about where this team is headed. The offensive line still has me concerned about our pass protection. But with our defense and our cast of playmakers, I think this team can win a lot of games yet again. Great job by Justin Colbert stepping in here for Brandon Warren, who suffered broken ribs last episode. We'll talk about him here in just a moment. Also really happy with the way John Charles played in this game. Justin Payne, Mike Harris, all the running backs. A true team effort here on offense. Everyone got involved a little bit. And defensively, we caused a lot of havoc. This defensive line is a strength of this roster, and they showed why today. Now, looking ahead to next week, there's no guarantee that Brandon Warren plays, but he is probable. His ribs have recovered, but if he's not 100%, maybe we could see Justin Colbert out there for one more week. It will be a tougher matchup for Kalispell against Washington State, so we'll have to be careful. Regardless of who plays, we still need to cut down on the number of hits our quarterbacks are taking. That's not going to be a good deal for anybody. Defensively, our running game will definitely be tested. I thought Jonas Givens ran hard against us today, 
and it gets tougher for us in our matchup against the Cougars, who are 4-1 on the season. Kalispell now the number 17-ranked team in the country. Washington State has a pretty good rush offense and pass offense, and they're scoring about as much as Kalispell does on a week-to-week -week basis. While Kalispell didn't put up much of a fight against Stanford, Washington State just beat them in overtime 34-31. With the Cougars, their top-rated player is running back, Reno Springs. Like I said, the brother of Juno Springs went to the same high school as Ja'Cory Day. He's always been effective, but this year he's really getting the touches to show what he can do, averaging over 7 yards a run with his excellent speed and vision. At quarterback is the junior, Derek McMillan, who has 9 touchdowns, 4 picks on the season. Washington State has an excellent linebacker core, and we'll see if they're able to slow down the Kalispell rushing attack. I remember being worried about the Alabama matchup, but it didn't turn out to be a big issue for our running game. What are you expecting from this game? Let me know down below in the comments section. Now it's time to talk some more recruiting here for Kalispell, and there are no new commits this week. We still have a first place lead for top tackle Brandon Smith. He is the number one player we are trying to get and our lead is continuing to widen over the Oregon Ducks. I wonder if by his week nine visit, this recruiting battle could come to an end. That'd be huge. Ronnie Howard is very close to committing it seems. He is going to visit next week. I'm hoping he also commits at the same time. Marvin Mays, this one's gonna be tough. Mississippi State and Georgia are at the top of that list. And then we lost some ground this week for Derek Thornton as Washington must have offered him a scholarship. We're going to get him in for a visit here in a few weeks and I'm hoping we can regain some of this lost ground. Next week I plan to also give him a scholarship offer. That should probably help things out. For Daniel Foster, NC State now has the lead and Florida's not too far behind. We can't count on winning all these battles here, but hopefully we can win a couple key ones and then start to find some more prospects to fill up this recruiting board. That's still going to be an ongoing process. For Nick Robinson, we have a first place lead. We are out on Vince Donaldson, first place for James Huggins, first place for Marcus Jordan, and there are a few more players I wanted to talk about this episode. One of them is safety Lonnie Johnson who is a three-star prospect from North Carolina. He's not very good in coverage, but I think that he'd be a very good special teams player, and he'd help out in run defense. Maybe down the road he could be a more complete safety. Defensive end Michael Hurst is another player, a 74 overall. We're just now kind of getting into this recruiting battle. I think he'd primarily be a run defender with the 81 tackling and 80 block shedding. We're going after a junior college transfer from Minnesota, Mike Butler, a guard who's a 78 overall. And he has very good strength and very good pass blocking. We could definitely use a player like him. And there are more offensive linemen now that I'm trying to start up the recruiting battles for. Terry Ingram is the best among these three here at the bottom. Ingram, 6'7", 319 from Florida. Good run blocker with adequate strength. So a lot to talk about as we continue on here with recruiting. Next episode, Kalispell plays their 99th game in team history against Washington State. I hope you're looking forward to it, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please smash that like button if you did. Can we get this video over 1,000 likes? That'd be awesome. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hit the bell for notifications. I'll see you again soon. Have a great day.